Hey, hi everyone. Uh, this is Sanjay and I am a data engineer, a senior data engineer at Data Science Dojo. I have been working at Data Science Dojo for last few years and uh, talking about the Docker, the motivation for creating this uh, topic is uh, Docker has become a very essential tool, whether you, you want to only stick with the data science or data engineering, AI engineering, a lot of stuff. So it's, it, it is a very, it has become a very essential tool. So, so I think that's one of the motivation for taking this class. So, and this, this will be very, you know, this is, this will be like an introductory course kind of a course for you, for, uh, for, for everyone. So we will uh, cover the basic uh, fundamental concepts in Docker, right? So, and why it is important from the data science perspective, it is important because you want to create a, like a reproducible data science, right? So what, what's the idea? Many of you might have faced the issues regarding like, like let's say, you know, what, what happens in non-typical Docker environment, right? So you want to run some Python packages, right? In your computer and there is some dependencies issues, right? So you can't replicate, right? Without affecting your, all the libraries installed on your computer. So what will be the agenda of the today's, uh, this session is going to be, we are going to talk about Docker key concepts and vocabulary, as well as explain the advantages of you know cont containerization you, you have to also know the you know what are what are the advantages and there will be a demo lab uh, after you know after we cover the theory in the demo lab we'll we will have like a app basic app deployment the idea is like more of a workflow rather than you know a particular content on like a machine learning building model itself so we we, we are going to build uh, the app uh, of course this is more of a API call, but you can think like, you can replace that model with your own built model too, right? So we are going to build, we, we will already have a, a code there. So we'll just deploy it, right? So that's the idea. And then at the end of the session, I'll give you some other people opportunity to ask me some questions. So let's see the evolution of app deployment, right? How it got started, right? So in the traditional deployment, uh, before there was a thing called hypervisor, we used to install everything in the app, right? There was a problem, right? Uh, so, and then, then we move it to more, more into a uh, virtualized deployment. Now, some of you might have uh, the, you know, experience working with the, like installing like a VMware, right? From, from the VMware, install virtual, virtual images, right? So, and like try to run uh, like a Linux on Windows, right? So, but if you realize that it, it can become very heavy, right? So when you try to run like a, you know, Linux image on VM, the, the and then we are moving towards the container deployment. So you can see, uh, so you can run the, the difference between the virtual machine and the container is that in the container, so if you think about operating system, um, there is a kernel and user space, right? It will have its own operating system, right? Full operating system with the kernel, right? Everything. But in the, in the container, you are going to share the uh, operating system, like kernel with, with your host operating system. So that's where you are able to run container. You can run like, um, you know, if you try to install sometimes, you know, the package dependencies issues, right? So you will not face with the uh, with the container, yeah, with with the, with the container, right? So it makes like a, you know, generally we don't work at very like uh, from the data science perspective, we don't work uh, like uh, we don't work under like with the with the kernel, we don't deal it, right? So we work at a high higher level, so we don't need a virtual machines, right? So container will fulfill that need. So it is light, you know, you can pull any image from the, um, from the, you can, you can run any container, right? So, um, so for, for particular use case, right? So that you don't have to worry about managing the dependency problems, right? Uh, with, with the, with the traditional deployment, you have to manage like a different packages. If you try to install, you might have seen the conflict. If you try to fix one, there will be another problem, right? But with the 
then you can say, oh, I can deploy, you know, I can use uh, virtual machines, right? You can, you can run virtual machines, but the problem is they can be really heavy, right? And it requires a lot of system resources. And then that's why we have a container. We get the, um, you know, uh, benefit of the both world, right? So one is it's not that much heavy. The only thing it requires is the container runtime. And it's not, uh, you know, the applications are also not that heavy like a, a, a vir virtual machine, but, uh, but also they are isolated. So you get the benefit of both world. And now, so now why use Docker, right? Portable. So Docker is highly portable. As long as you have a um, Docker engine running, you can run Docker container, Docker, I, I will explain that later, right? Docker, Docker anywhere, right? So as long as, uh, you know, you, you get the exact replica, uh, so it is highly portable and it will make more sense if I talk about other different concepts, right? Isolation also, isolation is also there. It is not isolated like, uh, you know, a virtual machine because virtual machine is like a full image, right? So we are not sharing any, any kernel or anything else, right? But with, uh, with, the, with the Docker, there is some kind of isolation. You get a consistent environment, right? So there is a problem, right? Like sometimes people say, oh, it works on my machine, right? And, but, you know, if somebody asks, oh, why, why did not run? I, I followed your documentation, why it is not running, right? Then that person might claim, oh, it runs on my machine. But Docker helps to solve that problem too, right? So we have this consistency and scalability, right? We can easily scale too. And of course it is efficient too. And so let's look at a Docker architecture. I think this is a big one. I think this is the uh, part we are bringing a lot of different concepts here, right? So, so image is think of like a, it's a binary, right? And the difference between software binary and the image is like image has all the dependencies bundled together. And we will see that image, right? So, so image will have all the dependencies, right? So, uh, so a container is when you run that image, that becomes a container. So, so that, that's, that's a container, right? So when you make a, when you run that image, the container, that running container uh, is going to be a container, right? And there is a Docker daemon, right? That listens to like a, all the Docker stuff, stuff you're doing, like a Docker, you know, Docker image, uh, Docker, ma while you're managing the Docker image or running the Docker container, right? And also there is a registry, right? So the concept is like a repo. Uh, as you know, the GitHub repo, right? So in, in, in the GitHub repo, what happens is you put the source code Think of a registry as somewhere you store the image, right? Um, now there is a concept called Docker build. Docker build is, it's like a compiling. Think of that as a compiling, compiling the source code to the image. And I will talk about, um, there, is a, there is a concept called Docker file too, which we will use that to build. So which will convert that into a Docker image. And that Docker image you can run, um, and and also Docker pull. What does the Docker pull do? Docker pull will pull the image from the registry. So that's that's and you can bring it on machine. Now you can clearly see here how easy is it. Most as a main computer, there we, you install Docker, and inside that Docker um, you will. You will have images, you will have a containers running if you're running container, right? And there's a Docker daemon running, which will, which will talk to different command, right? So basically idea is whenever you um, run this command, the Docker daemon will take that action based on your command, right? So, so now you can clearly see how easy it is to share that image with the other people, right? Like you build the image, right? And you, um, you, let's say you build the image, right? Like particular dependency, all the Python packages required for that use case. And then what you do is you push that image to the registry, right? And it's, it's in somewhere in the cloud. Docker Hub is a popular container registry to store that image, uh, but it could be other than private registry like 
provided by Azure and AWS are also, uh, there are also registries, right? And the other person B can pull that image, right? So they can pull that image. So they even don't have to build. So that's why you can share your computing environment with other people with each, right? And then you can also run. So now you can clearly see they don't have to install anything at all in their system. The only thing they have to install is, um, of course, um, they, ha they have to install Docker, right? Well, after installing Docker, they don't have to install anything else, right? So there are, of course, dependencies like for Windows and, uh, you know, um, Mac. Um, um, so basically, when you talk about Docker, uh, Docker, we we mean to say a Linux, uh, Linux container, right? But nowadays, people, uh, I think that's a, that's, I think 95% of the, most of the containers are Linux containers, but don't worry because um, Docker has made it really easy for you to also run Linux containers because they have made a label called Docker Desktop. So with the help of Doc Docker Desktop, Windows user and Mac user can also learn Linux container, right? So, so when, whenever I say a container, there are other kinds of containers too, but basically understand Linux containers, which we run on all the computer. So once you, once you fulfill that system requirements, you can, anyone can run this computer. Now you can run package, right? So, so whole, all the libraries, everything is installed in the computer, uh, in, in that image and anyone can run and anyone can try out that application or whatever you have. So let me go back to the slide, right? So this is the, let's say Redis image, right? Redis is like a caching, you know, database, right? It's very popular database for, you know, key key value database, and it's very popular for caching. And, um, you know, it is published by Redis. Now, if you want to run on your system, you just pull the image and run a particular port, right? So it's very easy. If you think about directly, Installing on the host, it can be very, it can be complicated, right? Especially if you are talking about Windows or, you know, Mac. And also, there is a Docker daemon running, right? And Docker client. This is a client right side, right? Client is connecting to the Docker host. So I talked about images, containers, networks, and volume and registry, right? Let's let's discuss about that. So these are different concept and you know several concepts like images, containers, network, and volume and registry. Once you understand this concept, it will be very easy, right? So you will learn just enough to be dangerous. I know that this this is like a I have added a text here, right? So so basically here, if you see here, so if you see a Docker image is a self-content portable package, right? It's a package that includes all the dependencies, right? So you don't have to install anything. Uh, once you have a Docker, of course, running. If you look at the API of Docker image, so generally any API, so um, Docker image, right? So, so once you install Docker in your system, um, just like, you know, um, you, you can run Docker image and the command, right? So what are the APIs? So these all are the APIs related with the Docker image. So how can you interact with the Docker daemon, right? How, how, what are the things which you can do, right? Now we understand the image. What are the things you can do using the API, right? And, uh, and, and then one of the thing is building image from a Docker file. Now we'll, I will explain in the next slide, what is Docker file? If you look at the Docker image, you can't do anything, right? Uh, Docker, think of a Docker file is a kind of a recipe. So, and once you, once Docker image build, once you run um, that, it converts that Docker file into Docker image, which you can run as a container, right? Uh, and so, and you can also inspect the image, history of the image, right? Content, you know, so you can see there are different commands and you don't have to remember uh, because all you have to do is Docker image help. So there is a pull, as I talked about, right? Pull is, so Docker pull is like uh, pulling the image from the registry. Now you have to understand what is Docker registry, right? Docker registry is a remote repo where you store that image. If it is only on your local computer, how can you share with other people, right? 
So that is one thing. Docker push, that's clear, right? So whenever we are talking a push or pull, we are talking about pushing that image to the remote registry, right? And sharing with, and you, you don't want to have too many unnecessary images in your system, right? So you want to remove, right? So these are some popular um, yeah, command, which you usually use with Docker image. And now let's see, uh, you might have seen that, right? You might have seen that we have used a uh, Docker image, like Docker build, right? So what is it actually, right? The actual is that um, we are building from the, uh, it's think of the, that as a compiling, think of that as a compiling, right? So we're compiling the Docker file into Docker image, right? And think of this as a, we are using, and the beauty of Docker is you can use the base image, right? You can use a base image. And in this case, you can see we are already using a Python 3.9. Let's say we are using the standard Python 3.9 and Slim Buster is optimized for, optimized for lightweight, right? So if you think about VM, VM has a lot of unnecessary stuff, right? Uh, we don't want that, right? So it's it's very trimmed, optimized. We need Python 3.5.9 and core operating system, you know, libraries and those kind of things, right? Um, so you can see, and we are also using copy, copy to copy requirement. So so when you build this command, so it is building the image, right? So and think of the, and you are running this in the host machine, right? So you are running this in the host machine. So what it does is it copies the uh, the requirement file uh, requirement file in that uh, host machine and put it into a, a build context image file system. So it is creating the image file system right while it is building, and it also installs. So when you execute run, it installs. It runs the uh, that command right. So pip install or whatever install you have it right. Uh, copy is copy, right? Whatever content is in that folder where you're running this command, it will it will execute. It will copy those command into a image file system. So so think of this as a when you're you can imagine you're running the Docker build command somewhere in your terminal, right? So what it does is it copies with the copy. It copies the file from the host that directory into the image file system, right? And then, then it can run that requirement file. It can install, it can remove unnecessary file, right? And expose port to the outside world. If, if you want to expose the container port, it will expose that outside world also. And, and this is environmental variable, right? Setting the environmental variable too. So environmental variable uh, is like a, you know, variable associated with the operating system. In this case, a container, right, for the image. So we are setting, and after the well container has started, right? So when, this is a static image, right? But when you convert it into a container, running container, what do you want to execute after the image is built? So that's where you write Python app py file right so these are uh, various you know various keywords associated with building the image and now again um, now if you look at so whenever you are working with a docker um, you can avoid the cli right most of the time it will be cli and docker docker desktop also makes life easier you can list it so uh, but don't get intimidated right so it, it's not uh, so it's very intuitive if you understand right so uh, uh, earlier we talked about Docker, you know, you just type this in a, you know, just like a select star in the, your secret class, right? You, you, you did it. Think of that like a, you will kind of run this similar in the, for the Docker. So, so like a Docker image was associated with running Docker, uh, Docker images, managing the Docker images. Now Docker and container, you might be thinking this is related with managing the container, right? This, so it's pretty intuitive, right? What is container? Container is running application from the Docker image, right? So when you, whenever you do Docker container, run that image, 
that image will run, right? So that's a Docker container. Container, it has everything installed. So, and it will run its, its own, you know, file system, everything. It is completely isolated from the computer where you're running. It has its own Python package, right? And every, everything else, like what, what it depends, right? Uh, if we use a Redis, it will have its own Redis, but that Redis, that's a MySQL. If you use a MySQL image, that MySQL image will not be available in the host system, but it will be available inside that container. That's why it is isolated, right? So, so you can understand, you can clearly see uh, Docker, whenever we see Docker container, it is associated with managing the container and LS, right? Uh, so this is this is it, right? So stop, remove. So what are the things we can do with the Docker container, right? Docker container is something that runs. So we can immediately understand stop is something that API applies to a Docker container, right? Because it's something running, but we can't stop image because image is static, right? So you can you can uh, make a educated guess about it. And this is if you want to get inside the shell. Right. If you want to get inside the container, then you can uh, run this command. So you will be inside the file system of, now there is a concept called volume. One of the thing about container is, once you remove that container, all the data is lost. So volume provides us the opportunity to store the data outside the container lifecycle, right? Sometimes, you know, you want to persist the data, right? You want to persist the data, even the container is removed. So that's where um, we use volume. Um, so there are different types of volumes, uh, named volumes. It is, you know, think of them as a different type of volume. So for any type, if you want to manage the stories of the, you know, con container data, that is associated with the volume, right? And, and then, um, so, so there are different types of volumes, right? Name, name volumes, anonymous volumes in bind mount. So for now, just think of, think of this as a, if you want to persist something, or sometimes if you want to access those, remember, so you don't have uh, access to the data out in, they are in the container, right? But you can mount with the bind mount, you can mount in a way that your host system and the Docker can share the same volume, same uh, files, right? So that helps the volume because uh, otherwise the Docker container and your host are separated, right? And there are different commands related with the Docker volume. One is a create, one is, uh, you know, inspect if you want to inspect, if you want to list, right? Prune always associated with removing, you know, the volume, right? And now let's talk about the network. Network is also important com compute, right? Whenever we talk about compute, it's always about storage, you know, network, compute. So network, there are different types of network, uh, like a bridge network um, is a default. So bridge, host, overlay, and Mac, Mac VLAN, right? So, so there, there are different use cases for each of them. Breeze, think of a bridge as a, you know, so, Network, when do we need network? If the container has to communicate with the other container or with the host or with the outside world, right? That's why we need network. And if you want to make your container accessible to the outside world, of course you need to configure a container. Usually for a data science project, we usually don't deal that much with this one. We are more focused on dependency management or like, you know, the packages, Docker file, what package we installed, but I'm just giving, I'm just covering this so that we have, I cover the network part too, right? So containers, if you want to communicate the bridge container, right? If you want to connect between different containers, right? But that virtual network will be separate from the host network, right? So what does that mean is that uh, if port 80, uh, so they will be in a different network. In bridge network, host network and the uh, uh, Docker network will be different. Uh, there is another one called host network, right? Host network will means that the host network will be sharing the Docker will share, Docker containers will share the network with the host. 
and there is an overlay it's like more in a distributed systems right in a distributed systems where you want to share uh, the same network between the containers um, then you can use overlay uh, and MACV line is to provide assign unique MAC address to each container yeah in some use cases you might want that one right so 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 it depends on your use case right so host is very fast because you are not using a virtual network of docker right so you are directly sharing the network with the host so it, the communication there is no any like you know you don't have to hop through the uh, virtual network of docker right um so yeah so overlay is more used in a distributed systems and now similarly uh, the Docker network, right? It's pretty intuitive. Docker network connect. If you want to connect a container to a network, you run this command. If you want to create a new network, run this one, right? Docker uh, create network, right? And if you want to disconnect the container from a network, you can also disconnect, right? So yeah, so it's they have a different uh, a APIs for the network too. Now, let let's go about how to manage the image storage with the docker registry right as you know that um, it doesn't matter if the image is within your computer right if the image is you know in a computer how can you share with other people how can you create a reproducible data science right so that's why it's important to also work with the docker registry right so Docker registry and and the way is that you have a Docker file. You define all the dependencies in the Docker file, and after that you build that into an image, right? And you can run locally too, and you can run you, you can run locally and you can push that image to the Docker Hub, right? And your colleague or other people can pull that image from the Docker Hub and run on their computer. So this is your computer. This is their computer, right? So this is where you can share your work, so share your environment with other people. And this is a uh, Docker Hub is popular as a public registry, but we have private offerings too, right? Because in some many workplaces, you don't want to expose that as a public, you know, public. Uh, container registry right so we have we have other options too um they, these are mostly paid service for the private uh, you know registry um uh, so this one is from azure aws and google right so all of them and you can also use a private network to connect with them so you might have you might have that need now i'm going to go into the next one so remember when you are managing the container, it's a single container. What about managing the multiple container, right? So multiple container can be a tricky, right? And there is a, a called Docker Compose. Docker Compose helps you to manage. Uh, so it's another concept, right? So think of that as a, you will define everything in a file, Docker Compose and uh, you will, uh, I think, uh, yeah, you will, uh, you will manage container. For now, think of this as a, how to manage different containers in, into a single file, how to coordinate, right? Let's say, uh, I, I'll, I'll do a demo that, and that time it will make sense, right? Because, um, so you have a, you have a Redis database, right? Redis for caching and you have your own app, QA app, right? So, when you do a QA app and Redis app, a QA app has a dependency on the database, right? So they are different, uh, they are built from different image. You don't have to have them, all of them in a single image. So how can you, you know, orchestrate different images and talk, make them talk to each other, right? So that's the idea. Um, and if you look at, so services, you know, I'm just giving the definition of this, right? So every Docker Compose file has a group group of containers, right? When you're dealing with the multiple containers, you use a Docker Compose. And building, so, so uh, network mappings is also important, right? Um, so this will become clear, you know, volume mappings and startup container. So you can, you can see there is a mapping between, um, you know, Docker file and Docker Compose, right? 
So yeah, it can be overwhelming to see at this point. So the essence is that whenever you want to manage multiple containers, um, multiple containers in the same host, you want to use a Docker Compose. Like in your typical data science workflow, you might want to have a SQL database, just pull the SQL image, right? You want to have maybe Redis, Redis for caching or maybe um, you know, uh, elastic search for search, right? So you can pull different services. You don't have to install them into the same container, right? And and build a Docker Compose file. So it will uh, it will it'll make your workflow a lot easier. So that's a motivation. But um, I, there are other concepts. Uh, so let's do a demo now, right? So what we have learned so far. Uh, so, uh, so this is a, you know, like uh, if you want to set up on your computer, right? You have to install all these, uh, you know, desktop for Mac and we have Windows. So this is only one time thing, right? Once you set up on your computer, after that, you, you, you are hassle free. Unlike in, in your old, good old days, what used to happen, you have to struggle with every new package installation, right? Whether it's a, uh, anything related with the, you know, any software. Once you go through one time hassle, right? Once you install this docker in your system, you'll be good for, uh, you know, you'll be good for everything, right? So you'll be good. Um, otherwise, why do you want to use a docker, right? Why do you want to use install another package, right? So I'll, I'll request everyone, if you don't have a, you know, installed uh, option, um, yeah, just, just go through this one. I have already installed in my machine. Um, and, and always ask in the Discord, I'm, I will be available, right? So any problem installing this or any, any issues related with this, right? So now let's, let's assume that we have already installed, right? So what we are going to do is, as I mentioned in the agenda, right? So we have one app. It's a very basic app and I'm using a Gradio. Um, it's it's a you know think of that as a app framework web framework right um, this is a python code right where we are taking the input from the user and making an api call to open ai and it will generate the output so the app is already there what we are doing to do is we are going to dockerize that app right once we dockerize that app then you can run anywhere easily right this one, uh, we have a two app. One is we are not using, we are just using app, right? The other one is with the, with the integration with the Redis. This app where we are, what we are doing is, if you come back and ask the same question, it will cache that result in the Redis and get the result from Redis. So you don't have to make an expensive call to open AI again. Here we are using a Docker Compose file. So where we are connecting the, a Redis container and the uh, app. So now let's do the demo, right? And also one more thing I want to mention here is that link to the repo. And I have also listed some of the commands as a chit sit, so which you can use it uh, if you while you're following it. Um, so for working with the Docker image, Docker containers, right? So I have added all the you know popular chit uh, you know commands. And so let's go back to the command, right? And and we also, oh, one more thing. So whenever you're running on the, you know, uh, working using a Docker desktop, you have to always in initialize the Docker desktop, right? So I will also go through a Docker desktop. Usually if you are uh, in Linux, you don't have to install uh, um, Docker desktop, but for Ubuntu and Windows, you have to install that. Um, so that will make, Somehow I'm unable to access the UI, but that's fine. Uh, the, the Docker is still running. So you, you can see that, right? Docker images, right? So let me start with the, right? So, so if, you want to, if you want to use the Docker image and Docker images, they are similar. If you want to use the API, right? Docker image is the UI, uh, so, you know, the prefix you associated with managing the image, right? So what I can do is Docker image, and there is also command, right? Build, right? So if you do help, it will also give you the help, what to do, right? 
So, and if you look at the, um, I have a Docker file. If you don't provide the name, it will automatically associate this with the Docker file. So Docker image builds. Now I have this Docker file and let's go to a Visual Studio code. You don't have to install anything. Uh, I'm just uh, using this as an editor. So if you look at the Docker file, this is a recipe, right? We are using a Python 3.9 base image. We are copying the requirement file inside the image file system. You're installing the package. We are exposing it, right? So, so this, this is what is this happening. And so when I, when I install build, I can tag it, right? So I want to give it something a very good name, right? Open AI app, and I'm building this. So now it is going to build the image. And if I do um, Docker images, right? Docker image list, I can see this image is running. This image is, I have built the image, right? Uh, this one was faster because the result was already cached. Sometimes, you know, Docker, you know, cached the result and it doesn't want to rebuild again and again, right? If you don't want to, what they call it, um, rebuild. So what you can do is you can type no cache. So it will do a fresh. It's like, a, you know, when you access the browser, if some of the static files and images are already cached, so it will not fetch the new one, right? So, but this one is kind of, yeah, this one is creating the fresh one. So after that, once we have an image, what do you want to do? We have to run the container, right? And uh, let's 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 look at while it is building. Let's look at the uh, file, right? It is it is very basic file. All our application code is here, right? So it is basically uh, taking an input, making API call to open AI, and calling back the result. So, and by the way, I want to recommend something here. I want to point out here. Uh, this is not related with the Docker per se. Although we are using a DaVinci 003, um, OpenAI has re recently released uh, ChatGPT API, and I will update the report too. It's, it, it has been recent, so which is um, you know ten times cheaper than the you know text DaVinci. Uh, this is just for the info, and be careful with the pricing too, right? I'm just doing it um, you know just for the demo, but you have to be careful. It's not free. Making API call to that result, so that's why. In our second use case, we are using a Redis, right? We want to save the expensive results. But while you're trying this out, be always careful with the price. OK, so I have built the image, right? So now I can, um, uh, there is another way because I have run multiple times this one. I will just go back and so this one. Um, so now, since I have already uh, built the image, right? Docker images, right? I don't have to run as a pseudo user, sorry. So I have just built the open AI image. Now I can run a Docker image, a Docker, uh, I will say container. You can run like a Docker run too, but I will mention, I will call it out Docker container because that way it will be easier for you to run, remember, right? You can run calling a Docker run, but get used to the convention, right? When you're dealing with the image, call it Docker image build. When you're running with the container, run, uh, call it Docker container run, right? So Docker container run, and D is like a background, detached, and I'm going to say port 80, 80, 80, and I will call it, um, What's the name of the image? Open AI app. So I'm going to call it Open AI map, right? So now it has it has created the container, right? So basically, this port is like a published port, right? So what it, it's saying is, remember, they are in a different network, right? They are in a different network. And we want to make sure we want to map the port from the you know container uh, container to the host, right? So we're mapping ATAT, right? So, so think of that as a first one. First one refers to the a host network port, and this one is a port because this is a bridge network, right? So Docker has its own network. So now if I do sudo container, uh, you know, list, Docker container 
list. So now you can see it is running on the port 8080, right? So, um, so basically it is running on the, my, now I can access this outside the container. Now, if I go, this is my host computer, right? Um, if, if I go to, if I go to that container, let me see local host 8080. Now I see the app. So this app is running now, up and running, right? Uh, now I say, what is uh, Docker container, right? And if, and I have an API key, of course, uh, you, you can use your own API key. I'm going to paste my API key here and it's going to call API, API and it gets the result. But there is a problem one. Now, if I want to make another call, if I make a submit and make an API call, it is going to make a call again. You know, we are not caching the result, right? We're just using a API and we're making a call. It is stateless, right? Now, let's go back to the, let's look, look, let's check another thing, right? Docker container list. Uh, so this is a Docker container, Docker, you know, what, what, what they call it, um, container uh, image is there, right? So what is another one? Network, let's check the network. So you can see that, uh, so we have a different network, right? So it's not important. For now, we are using a bridge network, right? For that container. Um, network, um, I think uh, in the beginning, let's, uh, please don't worry that much about the network. Um, um, it's, it's more of an advanced concept. I'm, I'm just covering it. It's a one concept there, right? Uh, now let's go and uh, let's go to our, uh, let's go to Q&A Redis app, right? Now, if you look at, uh, I, I'll just open the VS Code because it's easy to see, right? So this is the same app, but only the difference in that this app is um, we are checking the result in Redis. Redis is a caching database, right? So if the answer is not there, then we are going to make an API call to the open AI. And since we are going to use two different containers, um, one is the app itself, and the other one is the Redis app, right? If you look at this, we are, this time we are going to use our Docker Compose because we are managing the multiple container, right? One is a Redis container running, and the other one is our app, right? So, so this is the image. What we're trying to say is this is a custom build. Uh, you know, we want to build our own, right? The Docker file name is Docker file, right? And so if you look at the services, right? One is called Gradio and the other one is called Redis, right? So we have a two, we have a two containers going to be running. And, and it has a dependency. If you think about Redis, so when you run, it will pull the Redis image first and then Gradio. And, and the, the distinction between Redis and uh, Gradio is Redis fetch the latest Redis app from the software. I don't want to build my own. I want to pull it from the public repository, right? public Docker container registry. And the Gradio app is going to be, I want to build using the Docker file in my directory. So you could have a situation where you have a, you want to pull the image of MySQL, Redis, those are pretty standard, right? You don't customize them that much. And you have an app, you, you want to build your own. So yeah, and then let's, let's, do, let's go back, switch back to the terminal. And there is a command. If you, now we are dealing with a Docker Compose, right? We have to coordinate a lot of different things. So, so what will be the command? It will be associated with the compose help, right? Uh, so this is related, this is the API related with the command related with working with the Docker compose API, right? So what I can do is uh, Docker compose and by default, it will always look into that, this particular directory, right? Whatever it is in. So it will do, Docker compose up, uh, so I think up the task mode, right? So up, so I'm going to do up, so it will run that file. Okay, 
So they are already running. Okay. I, I think I, I already run it, but the idea is process is same, right? So now if I go, if, if, you, if you look at the Docker Compose file, right? So it is mapping, it is mapping to AT, post AT. Gradio app is AT. Remember the one which we run earlier in the, while we are running the Docker container, we are mapping to AT, AT host, right? Both can't run on the single app. So what I did is I map it to port 80 on the host. So now if I go to local host, right? Let me go to local host, uh, local host. The Grady app is running, but the difference between these two app is one is not using a uh, Redis and the other one is using Redis. So I can ask this question, what is Docker container here, right? So if I go here and if I ask this question, what is Docker container? And of course I have to give the API key again, submit. It is going to, uh, first time it will fetch and put it in the cache, but next time if I try, I get immediate result because I'm getting sharp from the cache. And those two containers are talking. Now let's go to our Docker hub. This is our registry, right? Now what's the point if it's already, if we, it's only in your system, right? You want to push this image to the remote, remote registry, right? So what I can do is a uh, Docker login. Um, I think what, what is my username here? I have created dummy username for this demo. So that, that is going to be FO and the password is going to be, uh, okay, now I am logged in, right? I'm connected to that Docker registry. Now, if you look at the, if you look at the Docker images, right? Pseudo Docker images. Don't worry, that is a temp account. So, okay, Docker. So now I want to push, let's, let's say I want to push this image, right? Open AI app, right? So what I can do is I can Docker image tag, this is the name of the app. And what's the name of my account? It's a FODAI forward slash what that, let me call it AI app. And it's a, it's a convention to use the image ID as a commit tag ID, right? So what I did here is I want to rename it into open AI to FODAI slash open AI app. So this is my Docker hub and this is my push, right? So I'm going to, I tag it and I'm going to Docker push it. And I have, I'm, I'm pushing this image, right? So I built the image, now I can share with anyone. And similarly, you can pull it, pull the image, right? So you can provide the path and you can pull that image and run on your system. All right, I think that's it.